So, uh, you know, welcome everybody uh, here in person and also online. Uh, welcome to our show, Alumni in the Industry. Uh, we started this in October, as some of you already know, and this has been a platform basically where we bring back awesome alumni uh, who are out in the industry doing really cool stuff uh, and then bring them back to speak to our community, uh, current students, uh, some people in your year as well, uh, and, and, and other alumni uh, and potentially prospective students as well. Uh, with us today, we have Renata Bade Badia, Barajas, Barajas uh, and Jillian Verbert. Ber Ber yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll leave it to you guys to do the introductions. Uh, but basically, the format for today's uh, show is going to be we'll have a presentation. Uh, and then following this, there'll just be an open QA so you guys can ask questions. Uh, and, then, and then, yeah, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up. So without further ado, you guys are ready. Yeah, thank you for the, for the invitation and for uh, the introduction. As Lori said, I am Janetha. And I'm Julian. And we're the co-founders of Green Bites. Hence, we're doing this together because we founded this company together. <laughs> and it made sense to just kind of come together and talk about it, not redundantly. Yeah. Uh, basically, we're going to talk you through uh, the journey that we took to get to where we are today, some of a little bit about our backgrounds and we just want to keep it really casual and open for conversation so we'll have lots of room for questions and we would be really happy to interact with you guys and the people online as well so all about me for those of you who don't know me i'm julian Berber, and i graduated from ifc in 2019 i'm originally from canada i went to the university of calgary i studied geophysics and it's every geoscientist dream to come to Iceland. So, you know what I did as soon as I graduated, was pack up my bags and come here. Um, and then in IIC, I did my thesis on geothermal, naturally, as being a geophysicist, about the magnetic exploration of the Reykjanes Peninsula. And Renata, about you. <laughs> yes. So I am originally from Mexico, but I've lived all over the place. Uh, I mostly grew up in the States. Uh, I graduated with a background in mechanical engineering and I came to Iceland School of Energy to learn about sustainable energy. Um, mechanical engineering is always kind of a stepping stone for me, so I'm really excited to come to Iceland and kind of play in this really great country that we have that, as a student from that perspective, kind of serves as like a case study for so many different things. Uh, I did my thesis on wind energy. Um, I partnered with uh, Landsne and Landsvirkin. Uh, after graduating, I, short, I worked at Landsvirkin in the wind energy department and shortly afterwards uh, started being back with Julian. Yeah, while Ronaldo was working, uh, this idea for Green Bites was born and I had some field work to do at the end of my thesis, so it took a little longer. Um, and when I was like, hey, I have this crazy idea. <laughs> Do you want to help me with it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, why not? What else am I doing besides writing the end of my thesis? <laughs> um, so as I said, very expensive, as everyone knows, <laughs> Renata and I both had jobs while we were working here. And we both worked in the restaurant industry serving food. <laughs> and uh, at the end of the day, we noticed this like huge problem that there's so much food waste. I actually got introduced to the concept of dumpster diving in Iceland. I thought it was crazy. I actually think Lori told me about it. <laughs> uh, and I thought it was insane, like that there was just so much food, perfectly good food too, that was being thrown away at bakeries, at restaurants, at grocery stores, that people were like, yeah, I can just go into this garbage and take it. So we noticed this problem. And then Renata, being the brainiac that she is, <laughs> I have an idea. Yeah. So, I mean, while working in the restaurants in Reykjavik, I tried implementing different things and made like a little spreadsheet and gave it to people. I'm like, hey guys, let's fill it out so we know what we're throwing away. And of course that didn't work because no one wants to do extra work after you're like working a whole shift and it's nine o'clock and you want to go home. Uh, so while working in Lensvidgen, I was uh, looking at evaluating algorithms that were used to predict how much energy can be produced using uh, wind. And the, 
idea kind of came and was like, oh, these algorithms can be used to predict this stuff. Why can't it be used to predict future food consumption? Uh, so that's when I brought on Jill because she has this great background in uh, machine learning because she was TA here at the school. Yeah, and actually a lot of the classes that we took at the university in ISC, we, unbeknownst to us, were heavily used while we were making this company through to this day. Yeah, to this day, like Especially obviously the, the machine like learning <laughs> course that I took at ISC, which I was not 100% certain that I wanted to take, but someone was like, yeah, just try it out. Um, and then also like energy economics and all of these other classes have helped us so much like moving forward. So we kind of started this company and we're like, okay, what do we do? And Eisen has a great startup community. So we just applied for an accelerator. Um, yeah, we started yeah. off with uh, the social startup accelerator program called Snapraide, uh, which means brilliant. Yeah, uh, genius. Genius in Icelandic. Um, and they taught us how to make a business plan, how to look at marketing, how to get financing and funding, uh, how to prove product market fit, all these different business background things that we as people in STEM did not really know about, but it's crucial to starting a business. And we also participated in Good Legged, which is this really cool startup competition where you pitch. And it was really interesting to have these two experiences at the same time, because one is like really kind of like fintechy, and the other one's kind of more impact based and bringing the two together about how can we make a positive impact to the planet while doing something that's financially feasible for us, but also our customers. Uh, and that journey just continued in the other things that we did, like some accelerators abroad, and we did take four hackathons over the course of COVID since there were so many uh, online, and we did some global ones, some Danish ones, some European ones, and that led us to accelerators that were based in the Baltics and learning more and more. Yeah, so like during these deep dives, we realized that this is not just an icing problem. This is like a huge global problem that costs millions of euro a year. It's phenomenal how much food that we throw away. So we were like, yes, this is definitely the path that we need to take. Yeah, it's a monetary issue and it's also a sustainability issue. And like coming fresh from this program, we like knew that we wanted to do something in sustainability. And like the more we learned about food waste, the more we realized that it has this crazy impact on the planet. Like, I don't know if you know this, but if food waste were a country, it would be the third largest contributor of greenhouse gas emissions in the world. Food waste actually contributes three times more greenhouse gas emissions than global aviation. And like everyone knows, like when you get on a plane, like you're going to be using a lot of greenhouse gas emissions. But the, like the quantity of food waste that we throw away as, uh, as a planet is significantly more disruptive to our ecosystem. So what are we going to do about this? Uh, that's why we made Green Bites and a little bit more. About our solution? Yeah, our solution. So we were like, how do we trick people into reducing their food waste? Make them think they're saving lots of money, which they, they are. are. Because if you throw away food, food is expensive. I spend most of my money on food. <laughs> Especially being on a tiny island, like in the middle of the Atlantic that brings most of the food from abroad and has to invest lots of money to produce food uh, locally. Like it makes no sense to spend all this money bringing food in, having food that's super expensive and then throwing it away. Mm -hmm. So we decided to create this web application that eventually became this after many, many iterations of design, prototyping, testing, and so forth. Uh, and basically what it does, it breaks down uh, menus for restaurants, it tracks inventory, and it predicts future food consumption. That is like the core of what we do. We basically tell restaurants how much food they should be ordering based on what they're going to sell in the upcoming days. So we put in a bunch of different types of data, like weather and day of the week and past sales, of course, to make predictions about the future. Yeah, and we obviously started out with one company that was really great, Lemon is a local juice bar. Uh, so we had just one model for them where we predict 
uh, how much food they were going to sell in the next seven days. And we got a pretty good accuracy, of like 86% and a standard deviation of like two. Uh, so it was really good. Um, and then we have been doing this for more restaurants. We currently have five or six restaurants that we're using our application <laughs> right now. Um, and now it's really great because we have all this data, we can collect more and more data and work towards building a global model that's more dependent on location and not just solely on the sales of one store. So Green Buy's process uh, is different than other people that do similar things because there are point of sales, obviously, that are used to track your, to track your sales, possibly inventory, but it's a lot of work because you have to put it in. So the way Green Bites work is works is we take all of the information from the point of sales to do the machine learning magic to tell them how much they should be ordering. So, uh, and then also send the orders out to their distributors. So we have like both sides of the information. We have how much food that they're selling and how much food that they're ordering. So we can tell how much food is lost in the process between when they order the food and when they sell the food. Yeah. So. Our value proposition is that we're saving time, we're saving money, we're reducing food waste, and we're reducing emissions. And all of these things are really important for running a business, especially a modern business that's recovering for COVID and wants to attract more uh, customers. Like the biggest uh, cost for restaurants is labor and reducing time for labor is obviously really financially beneficial. And food is the second biggest cost that restaurants have. So wasting food is not really an option for restaurants that haven't been doing so well because of the pandemic and that are looking to revamp and come out of this uh, situation a little bit stronger than they have been before. Uh, and then also there's a lot of market research on people being more interested in products that are sustainable we don't necessarily want things that are covered in plastic or that are requiring a lot of resources to be made or that are being wasted. So all of these different things that are good for the planet are also good for the business. So we'll each tell you a little about, about our own roles in the company because this is alumni in the industry and we both do very, we have overlap, but we both do very different things. So as I was the data scientist that got brought on, I naturally took the CTO <laughs> position of the company, which has turned into so much more. We're developing a React application now, which I had no idea how to do. I know how to code Python, not how to write JavaScript. <laughs> no, no, I kind of do. <laughs> um, so I oversee the design the uh, user experience, user interface, uh, the all of the tech background, developing new mod, developing, testing new models, improving models, uh, and also the, the intricacies of how we actually do this because there's so much more to the software app development than I ever knew. I'm not trained as a computer scientist, so. It was shocking how much I had to learn in such a quick time. And at points, I definitely didn't think I could do it. Uh, we actually had a one hire. Uh, uh, we've had a couple of hires now, and they're all really having really great, and some don't work out. And when they don't work out, I'm like, oh no, our world is over. I can't do it. But then I learned how to operate a back end system by myself, which was great. Yeah. And Jill also manages all of the tech team, and yeah. when we bring on other people or contract. Uh, people. Yeah. So I take on all things business and that has taken on a bigger meeting than I thought it would. Um, I'm responsible for finding us money. I'll do our fundraising. I'll put together our pitch decks. I'll write our grant applications. Um, I will do the lead generation when we're talking to new restaurants. I'll make connections with potential collaborators and try to envision what the future of Green Bites is gonna look like a few steps forward and see if we can get some money to get it into action. Uh, so basic project management, putting out fires kind of deal. Yeah, and Renata and I were just talking about how this energy economics class that we did yeah. at ISE was like wildly helpful in ways that neither of us thought it would ever be <laughs> in the future. Exactly. Recently, we were building a financial model to better predict like 
the inner workings of Green Bites and like have a good budget and figure out how much money we need and how much money we have to keep in uh, the, uh, in the business. And I actually went back through my notes and like pulled out my like final project for energy, energy econ. It was like, okay, so I need this and I need this other thing. And I was like, every time, blah, 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 blah. and it was very helpful. And I kind of wish I paid more attention in that class. But yeah, a lot of the classes that we have taken, even like energy law or like, like there's little bits and pieces that are all required to run a business uh, today. Like we need some legal advice. We need some business, some marketing, some all things tech. And obviously that's a huge, huge scope. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe we should talk a little bit about where we want to go in the future. Our dreams for Green Bites, yes, which we're strategizing right now. So I mentioned that we're trying to make a global model and we're trying to get this in as many restaurants as possible. Uh, obviously we know that we can't dominate the market and have every restaurant on Green Bites, but we want to collect an app, an app, an, app, an accurate, <laughs> an accurate representation of uh, like food consumption in restaurants in Reykjavik, in Iceland, Reykjavik. Um, and also we want to start working with grocery stores because grocery stores are a great data mine. Like literally everything is tracked in and out of grocery stores, where they're stored, the temperature of things. So we want to start trying to predict what grocery stores should keep on stock. Um, Iceland does a great job already in reducing the food waste in grocery stores by this, uh, like, last... Yeah, let's see, that's the same. Yeah, yeah, the, the last things, like, discounting food when they're going to expire, which is an Icelandic word. <laughs> yes. Um, and, but we want to help make them even stronger and also collect data in this. For sure. So we're not even dreaming. <laughs> yes. So I think, obviously, Agriculture is a huge part of our society as a planet. Like we all need to eat, so we all need to be producing food. And there's growing populations. So a lot, there's a lot of talk of growing the amount of food that we need to be making. But right now we throw away between a third and a half of all food produced in the world. So I wonder if we can both optimize the food that we have now and simultaneously increase the technology that we have for food production. So what does this have to do with green bites? So we basically predict future food consumption in a small sector of the end of the food supply chain. So the whole food supply chain is farmers, uh, processors, shippers, people that distribute food, import food, grocery stores, canteens, anywhere that there's food. That's all the food supply chain. And if we can look at all of the endpoints of where food is consumed. The whole point of why we're making and processing and moving this food. If we can look at where restaurants and grocery stores and canteens, anywhere where food is physically consumed and dump that all into a, a model and predict uh, small populations, future food consumption, we can optimize food supply chains and tell farmers, oh, maybe you should allocate more space for growing this crop oh, maybe this is a good investment for the future. You can bring on this, or we can prevent poor uh, financial decisions. Like maybe they want to grow kiwis in Iceland and maybe it's a good idea, but maybe the models show that they're not consumed widely in Iceland and maybe it would be not worth the 30 billion krona that it would take. So we have this dream to take lots of data and predict future food consumptions for populations and help uh, government officials make educated decisions about legislation to help food importers understand which food they should be importing and to help local food producers understand which foods and how much uh, food they should be producing. And that is our big long-term <laughs> dream. Yeah, because this food waste problem is like a multifaceted problem. There are so many issues with it and also so many solutions. Yeah. Very cool solutions about buying food that is going to be thrown away in a restaurant and the other like ordering apps similar to ours that don't use machine learning. <laughs> and food waste mitigation, like taking old coffee grinds and making beauty supplies or taking uh, old, I don't know, bread and Orange making fields. beer or... There's Orange lots. fields and making perfume or I don't know. There are lots of initiatives to reduce food waste in Iceland especially and globally, this is a global market. 
Um, we just hope to make the biggest impact that we can at our position in the process. Yeah. So yeah. does anyone have any questions? Well, maybe first we. Um, so we have kind of a mixed room. So I think maybe for those online, uh, could you, if you have a question for uh, Jill and Renata, could you please just write it in the chat uh, and then we'll kind of just try to do some kind of order to it. Uh, but um, maybe I can, I can start by saying thank you so much for, for coming and, and giving this presentation. Um, and also definitely warms my heart that these classes have like have been useful. It's like <laughs> definitely what we want to hear. Um, I mean, I didn't think so at the time, but it has proven otherwise. <laughs> so, yeah, and we, for the record, we didn't pay them to say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess one question that I have, and maybe this is like a technical question, but um, does, do your models like uh, deal with seasonality? Yeah, I mean it's uh, kind of it's kind of intrinsic in the the sales data because especially in Iceland, obviously there are like more sales in the summer and less sales, and the more data we have, it recognizes that. However, I do have like a day of the year and also a day of the week uh, okay. aspect to my models. Cool. And weather, as Renato said, also. How does that work? How does weather affect it? Um, I mean, so. So, I mean, people naturally want to go out and go to a patio or eat more food and buy ice cream when it's sunnier. Um, and there's definitely been a correlation that we've noticed in, like, we've, our predictions have somewhat gotten better when adding this information about the rain, precipitation, and force precipitations. Wind speed, wind speed, and temperature, sun cover, and all cloud cover, and all that stuff. So, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, what are the parameters in your model that have the highest sensitivity to to the food waste? To the what do you mean by that? Food like, waste? Uh, yeah, what parameters give the highest sensitivity to your model? To the model. I mean, it's a time series analysis, so it's mostly based off of the previous sales. So, kind of like, I guess you know, does uh, does sunlight or right or something like that? Yeah, I don't know, like uh, expiry date or um, sales we, in the yeah. So we don't we don't necessarily. So we're trying to. We're forecasting sales, not food waste. So we don't take into consideration the expiry date. We just have a blanket like, assumption that seven days after you order it or that it gets delivered, it will probably be past its eat by <laughs> date. Um, and we're predicting how many sales the restaurants will make. Restaurant will make. So we take in what they've sold in the past, put it into the model, and then can predict how much they should sell in the future. And the, the way that this helps, like, obviously our restaurants users are allowed to make their decisions. Uh, we can't just tell them what to order. Um, and they may have knowledge, like maybe they're going to have a big party and they know they're going to need a lot more food. So it's more just helping them be more educated to help them reduce food waste. We're not, I mean, we're not directly reducing food waste. We're just empowering our users to reduce food waste. Yeah, because we noticed that like when we did our market studies and talked to a bunch of restaurants, we'd ask them about the ordering process and like the different reasons that food ends up in the garbage. It's because that they ordered way too much food. And the reason that they ordered too much food is because like actually ordering food and deciding how much food to order takes a lot of time. Uh, and it's kind of confusing to do it well. And the bulk of who we spoke to said that they just kind of went around their store and saw what was missing and some of the really advanced people had like some sort of spreadsheet um but people tend to over order as opposed to under order just to be safe because they don't want to be yelled at by customers uh so we just kind of wanted to give them the confidence to order a, maybe a little bit less or more an accurate amount without having the fear of yeah. uh not providing quality service 
I don't know if that answers your question. I had a question about um, your customers. So their ordering system and their sales system, they probably have different databases, different software to manage that at their restaurant. How, how well is that compatible with your software and process? Yeah, so we have a direct connection to certain point of sale systems in Iceland. Uh, they just set up an account or they've set up like an application or a connection that we connect an API to and we can call their data whenever we want to. So that takes care of the sales. Uh, and as for Iceland, uh, the majority of distributors in Iceland uh, take phone calls or emails. <laughs> So we're not really changing anything huge there. A lot of places here don't have their past orders cataloged in any way because they have to take a sheet of paper they get from the distributor and type it all into the system and like do that kind of thing. So we're definitely trying to get rid of the clunkiness of manually putting in what they have ordered and what they have received because a lot of places won't do that. Even the most organized restaurants that we work with are like, no, I can't. I don't have the time to go through these receipts and put them into my point of sale system so that I can know myself. Whereas when they submit the order through us, it's all stored in our database and then we can call the data from their point of sale system and make a comparison that way. And like Jill said, uh, we most of the orders get sent through calls or emails. So we just automatically send an email to the distributors that they get food from. And we are working on the, the few that don't take emails that have like their own web shots. We've been in contact with one of the big ones and we're, we're figuring out. We're getting an API, uh, an endpoint to their API so we can send their orders, the orders that are associated with them directly to their warehouse. Cool. Yeah, the um, the sales data you have access to is that detailed and specific enough? Like this customer ordered one chicken sandwich, and that's one unit of chicken, two buns, one lettuce. Yeah. So actually, in our application, they the our users have to put in their stock and build their menu. So when they build their menu, they type in like, oh, my chicken burger has uh, sixty grams of chicken, one bun. Uh, 10 grams of lettuce, 10 grams of onion, 20 grams of ketchup. Um, and then, so in the back end, we do that calculation and pull their menu information that they have in the application. Um, I see that they sold six chicken burgers today and I could just multiply that matrix multiplication and get out the ingredients that they need to order. Probably one thing I should have said is it would have been good just because I know uh, you guys are seeing each other for the first time. Is just maybe introduce yourself as well when you ask a question. Uh, I thought that would be pretty good. But I am wondering uh, as well. Okay. I'm <laughs> What's that? I thought you were like, I'm Lori. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Lori. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, um, so maybe I'll do that. Yeah, hi, I'm Lori. I'm the project manager. I'm the school manager. Cool. Um, I'm wondering. So. Do you guys foresee yourself as, as being like, like a software um, platform that these companies would basically like log into and then just they'd have, you'd have recommendations for them and then maybe do the orders as well for them? Or is that-, is that We do the orders. Yeah. Do you so, want to see our app? Sure. Okay. Woo, demo time. Yeah. Anyone can go to our website and access and see the app place. Cool. Uh, you can also make an account, but- you don't tell your restaurant friends they can make it <laughs> there's a lot of free features that anyone can use like anyone can go and like break down their menu and the value of that is that if you're going to have a new re restaurant location or if you're bringing on chefs a lot uh you can have it all broken down and you can make it easier to bring on new chefs or have new locations uh you can also track your stock manually uh, if you pay for it, then we'll track it automatically based on the orders that you place and the, uh, when you receive orders. And another free feature is the distributor phone book. Okay. So you can organize all that because we've seen it messy. Yeah. So this is our application. Uh, this is just the setup screen right now. We're working with some designers. We actually got a design grant to make a visual that helps people understand how much food waste they're reducing, time they're saving, money they're saving, how much CO2 that 
is equivalent to and really trying to like motivate them to want to do better. <laughs> so like by using us, by submitting orders through us, you can save all this time, you'll save all this money, you'll save all that. So essentially we can calculate a baseline of how much they waste. And then after we start giving them suggestions, we can see what the difference between the baseline and how they're performing now. So could be up and down, could be equal. Any way that we want to spend it, we want any way you want to spend it, if they're doing better or doing worse, we want to encourage them to try to make better decisions. So uh, in, in our application, uh, you can make orders, uh, but first you have to add your distributors, add your stock information and build your menu. So if you were setting up, you go and you'd add your distributors in here. So you just add the distributor name, their email, their phone number, if you want, their website, so we can scrape their website. <laughs> um, and hours, if you want that information, it's just contact book for the, for the customers so they can have all of their distributors in one place. Cool, so once I have distributors, I can go in and I can add all of my stock. Um, so I just add an item. I say that I usually cow from, uh, and it has, usually get it from the food store, the product number is one, two, oops. Uh, I order it in kilograms. Um, I could put a price in there if I wanted, but that's just for me to calculate prices. Some people also have prices, so that's different. Other questions? Other questions? What's up? questions? No, uh, sorry, that's my team's going crazy. Okay. Cool. So once you have all of your stock items, I only have three. Very simple restaurant. I only have chicken, corn, and lettuce. You can go to your menu and you can add single items, sides or extras, and also combos, meals. So you just add a new item, select what kind of item. I want this to be Oh. Chicken. I say in this recipe there is chicken. I put 60 grams of chicken. And 15 grams of cow. I can write notes if I want it to be a recipe that someone can go in and look at uh, if they want information about how to make this dish. But it's just chicken and lettuce. So that's all. Um, and then you can submit orders. Uh, these are all the orders that I've submitted in the past. Uh, this is a dummy account that has no forecasting data in it. So there are no auto populated, but I'm turning the screen, but the amounts that we calculate the forecast that they'll need uh, based on a date range. If my cow was activated would just pop auto populate here and then I could add more or less um, and add those to order and I want it to be delivered on Monday uh, and I compile the order and I just check over it and then we send it to the distributors directly so they have to allow that we send it and then I submit the order uh, and it splits up the items to it sends them to each individual distributor that it's um, belongs to. So if I get corn from the store called me, then it sends it to that one, and I get chicken from the food store, it sends it to that one. Um, and then once I can go back to my orders, once my order has been saved in, I can either mark that they emailed me back and told me that they were going to bring it, or I can mark it as delivered, and then how much I ordered gets added to the stock that I have in store. So Right here, I have 19 kilograms, 24 kilograms of chicken, just added because I just or I just confirmed that I got it. One kilogram of corn and zero kilograms of kale. And then also at the end of the night, because we're taking in the sales, we can calculate how much uh, of each ingredient they've used throughout the day. So how much there should be take a reduction from the stock about what they've used. And that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> Do we have any more questions from the Do we have any questions from 
Well, I have uh, another question. <laughs> uh, the, we, we mentioned expiration dates earlier. I was wondering if that could be a, a future initiative to kind of change that, have different expiry dates for different items. Because I imagine like raw chicken versus frozen chicken versus ketchup has kind of different impact about when it would be leaving your stock and, and going into waste. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we focus on like perishable food items and I guess chicken, frozen chicken technically is, but we're operating under the assumption that you're ordering fresh chicken, which probably isn't the case for a lot of places. <laughs> um, but there are other uh, stock inventory total control yeah. type of things that focus specifically, focus specifically on. on expiry dates and how things are uh, stored, like temperature in the fridges and the freezers and all of this stuff. So like maybe potential partnerships in the future because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like there's someone that does this, does this well. Um, but we're definitely open to partnering with other companies that are reducing food waste and working with them in any way that we can. So yeah, maybe not an us thing in the future, but definitely. Uh, Thank you. I like that food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, I could maybe ask another question. I'm, I'm really curious how, or I guess, um, if you're allowed to say uh, who your um, kind of sponsors or backers are, people who, who have supported you to get this far? Like advice-wise or monetarily? Like funding-wise. Funding, yeah, sure, yeah. of course. Uh, we run, we've been funded completely on grants and competitions. So we've gotten the Women's Entrepreneurship Grant. We've gotten the uh, Los Laxo, the Climate Fund, uh, both in 2020 and in 2021. Uh, we've gotten the Matla the food grant. We've gotten some competition wins at a future food hackathon. We won a competition hosted by Alibaba Cloud. Um, oh, and uh, another one, the Million Ton Challenge. Yeah, yeah, just competitions and grants. Competitions. We had a lot of contact with Mixtovid, which is the enemy, the innovation, so, uh, the innovation hub. hub. Yeah, in Iceland. They were really great. They helped us a lot with writing grants. Absolutely. Grants are a huge deal. But yeah, our company is 100% owned by Renata and I. We have not brought in any external investors yet, uh, but are exploring that avenue currently. How has the process been? Because I know a lot of the students in Iceland School of Energy, it's an international program traveling all over the world, moving to Iceland. How has the process been with the start of the company and being, um, you know, not uh, citizens of Iceland and coming over for, for university and staying later? Yeah. So Renata is German. So she has a German passport. It's much easier for her. For her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which is part of the European economic area. However, I'm fully Canadian, have no ties to Europe at all. So, I mean, it's not easy starting a company. Um, but the reason that I can stay here is because I've hired myself as an expert working for Green Bites. Um, I feel like it felt really easy for us to do, but we had a lot of luck at the beginning with yeah. uh, having successes in all of these uh, startup innovation hubs. And like, that was really helpful because like before the innovation center or these different accelerators, we didn't really know what avenues we had or they'd also could point us in the direction of someone who had advice about legal things or how to get any sort of support that way. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely a little bit more challenging when you don't speak the language or have some visa barriers, uh, but you can do it. Awesome, thank you. I imagine it's, it's just hard in general, even if you were born and, and grew up here to start your own company. <laughs> I think a, a surprising amount of Icelanders start their own companies. Uh, there, I mean, I might be biased because of the startup community that I've been immersed in for the last two years, but I think there are a lot of Icelanders out there that start their own companies and take this entrepreneurship 
route in their lives um or eventually turn that leaf because i know yeah. from when i was working at lansbitkin there's at least two employees that i worked in my media area that are now entrepreneurs yeah that's awesome i mean Renata was first Iceland is a playground <laughs> it's very easy to play around and try out concepts and uh we're in like such an isolated ecosystem that you can try things without too much risk and uh, we had a question online from Chelsea, and she noted that might have already been answered, but um, if you'd like to unmute yourself, Chelsea, please feel free to uh, join in and ask it in person. Oh, okay. So, yeah, okay, microphone's not working. But uh, I do have a question here. And uh, what is the best part of being a startup in general in Iceland? Never thought of it. Yeah. Hi, Chelsea. <laughs> Thanks for the great question. Um, well, I would say a lot of freedom, but I work a lot of hours. <laughs> so I think the best part is the startup community. It's so big and everyone's so nice. And so many people have such great ideas and they're so passionate that it really like lifts you up. And this whole entrepreneurship is just like, ecosystem that Iceland has is just like so uplifting. I would say that I think in general for startups, not necessarily just in Iceland, yeah. <laughs> my favorite part of working at a startup is that everything that I do has a direct impact into what we're doing. So like I've worked in really big companies and I've worked in small companies and now we run a tech startup. And it feels really nice to know that the work that you're doing is going to contribute to something that is going to mean a new customer or additional funding or reducing food waste. Uh, it's really nice to feel that that connection to the end product that is what eventually gets you going. That's awesome. Thank you. Do you have any more questions on the room? Kelsey says, amazing, thank you. Uh, I have one more question, but I was just gonna give everyone another chance. <laughs> the, the, uh, um, so I feel like a lot of people might not realize when you started a company, the thoughts and the importance that goes behind the name and the logo, because it has so much future potential of growth and a big name and image. And so what was kind of the process behind that? <laughs> we just sat on my couch, drank some tea. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, what about this? No, what about this? Yeah, uh, I can't even remember what we started with on our first I think the application. I don't, I, don't even, I don't even know what we started with, but yeah, we just sat down, chatted about it. I mean, I've listened to so many startup podcasts and whatever of people like hiring people to make their name um, and all that stuff. Uh, but I, don't know, I think we, we just talked it through until we found something we liked. Um, I'm not sure it is pretty hard because yeah, we're like building a brand uh, and there are definitely other companies outside of Iceland named this. So we might run into some barriers in the future. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. We'll pivot at that point. Um, or maybe if we have some sort of cooperation with another food waste, uh, like tracking the expiry dates and that kind of stock thing, maybe that'll involve into something that is a different type of brand. Um, so liquid waste, but yeah. yeah. And but then our logo oh, yeah. is really thought out. Renata can describe it to you. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's pretty small, but <laughs> we're green bites. Bites obviously not being like a bite that you take out of something, but a, a computer, computer bite. bite. You'll notice there are two bites on here one here and it is green and i think that the name right now encompasses what we do really well we usually say that we like the people that work at green bites to be like nerdy hippies so it kind of has like the hippie with the green and then the nerd with the bites yeah. <laughs> so yeah we like it maybe we'll have to pivot in the future but we weren't considering all of these like other companies outside of Iceland. I don't think at that point we were even 
I feel like going global was just like so far out of what we were thinking about at the time. So yeah, it's definitely difficult to choose a name. We spoke about some really dumb ones. <laughs> I think it's a great name. Yeah. Did, did when you like landed on it, did it just click? Or yeah, it felt right. It felt right. <laughs> a awesome. lot of them were like, no. And I think at one point we were like random word generated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we're terrible. Look what a random word in Icelandic. Uh yeah. And at some points I we were talking about like how Adobe is like a river somewhere. We're like, yeah. oh, we can, oh, we were gonna name it after yeah. the, the river above Glimmer, which is, means bottom in Icelandic. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we can't do that. <laughs> but yeah, we were looking for some like random rivers in Iceland or random waterfalls that are like not commonly known, but it felt wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think Green Prince is perfect and yeah. Thanks. I think I saw something in the chat or is that just maybe? let me double check. Uh, last chance, any more questions online or in person? We're all covered in the chat. Cool. Well, I mean, I think this is about uh, about time. Uh, maybe we can give John a, a, a round of applause. And if anybody does come up with questions later, if they want to contact you afterwards, greenbites at greenbites.is. Perfect. Uh, we can just put that in the video. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, thank you again so much. And and uh, this will be the last alumni in the industry until I think about September. Uh, so the last of the season. So you guys, uh, thank you for being such a wonderful close to, to the uh, season. And, uh, and yeah, and we'll be back next academic term. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.